Okay, we're gonna scan the anterior shoulder. Um, the position that we do is that we put the hand in an open position, in supine, on the leg. Um, arm is just for the rest in the relaxed position. We start with a transverse view or a little short axis view of the, um, uh, the biceps tendon. Uh, important is not to scan it like this. Most people started scanning it like this. You have to be either in the transverse plane, the transverse plane of the body, or even a bit under like this. Yeah, so this is where you have to look for it, not like this, that's a common uh, mistake that is made. So place the probe here. Then we look on the image and we're gonna try and find the, the two important landmarks for this scan, which are of course here on the left, the, um, uh, the lesser, tuberos uh, the lesser um, tuberosity uh, or the, um, the greater, uh, uh, it's not the tuberosity, it's the... Uh, uh, yeah. Is it a tuberosity? tuberosity. Oh, this is, oh, sorry, my mistake. Yeah, this is, <laughs> it's late. And so it's a greater tuberosity and the lesser tuberosity. Here, the bone line in between, that's the line of the uh, intertubicular groove. Yes, we have the tendon lying above it. This is the biceps tendon. And uh, if you can look at my probe now, you can see I'm going to make a movement. I'm going to do this and this to actually uh, get some anisotropy inside the tendon. So let's see what that looks like here. But sometimes it's difficult to say what exactly is the tendon. So I make this angle and you see now the tendon becomes completely uh, 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 full of anisotropy. Yeah. So this is the tendon. Over it is the, uh, the ligament or the part of the subscapularis that, that crosses over. Uh, there's a bit of fat tissue in between here, so if I scan this you see a bit of fat tissue. And I think with you, you can even see, this is the biceps, but here you see another small structure that's also sensitive to anisotropy. I think this is actually an aponeurotic expansion of the supraspinatus tendon. If you look for that on uh, Google, you will find some papers that have been recently published that a uh, little uh, um, piece of the supraspinatus goes into the um, bicipital groove together with the biceps. So it looks more or less like there's two biceps, the th thin one and a thick one, but this is probably just the aponeurotic expansion of the supraspinatus. Um, okay, now we're inside the uh, intertubicular groove. We're gonna go uh, distal. So uh, important here is to scan it a bit from this position, so not up, but down. We go down a bit and then we see on the screen we see that the intertubicular groove is starting to disappear. We see that it's becoming less and less. If I angle the probe, you see the uh, tendon becoming uh, full of anisotropy again. We go a bit further, further, further. We follow this tendon down. Follow the tendon down, we still have it. We still have until we reach this position. And here we see a tendon coming in from the left, uh, a crossing over, and that is the uh, pectoralis major tendon. It inserts here on the humerus. Usually there's a little bit of a bony prominence here. Okay, you see that's a bit uh, prominent right there. Um, so this is the pectoralis. This uh, is the tendon of the, the biceps. And if I go a little bit more distal even, the tendon will become muscle belly. You see, this is muscle belly. Muscle belly of the long head of the biceps. So I go up again, proximal, you see the belly disappear. And I only have the tendon. I go down again and you see that here uh, the muscle belly starts to form. So it's a myotendinous junction here of the long head of the biceps. And if we look uh, medially to it, we see another muscle belly. And this muscle belly is a bit bigger. This is the muscle belly of the short head of the biceps. Yes, so this is the short head of the biceps, long head of the biceps, pectoralis major crossing over it. You go a little bit more distal and then you see the two muscle bellies, you see them fusing together. You see, so this now is all biceps, and you can even see with him the musculocutaneous nerve here deep to it, a little bit more hyperechoic. I go back up again, up, 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 and we go back to the intertubicular groove like that. So let me do that one more time. Go down, we follow the tendon. Here we see the muscle belly now of the uh, long head of the biceps together with the short head uh, go more distal and they become one. So this is a very good technique. We call it the elevator technique. Practice it so um, 
by scanning in a, in a, a bit faster than you would usually do. It's a, it's a good technique to practice and uh, try to make it as dynamic as possible. Okay, now we are back inside the intertubicular groove. Um, and now we want to see the long axis view of the biceps tendon. Therefore, uh, we can do two things. One of them is take the middle of the probe and then we rotate the probe to the long axis like this and we leave it on the tendon. That is though a very difficult technique, so I'm gonna show you a little bit of a simpler one. So I just place the probe in the long axis like this and I'm gonna move the probe first medially and then laterally and we're gonna see uh, the, the bony contours of the lesser and greater tuberosity. So let's see, first I go medial and I'm gonna see a very clear uh, pointy protuberance of the lesser tuberosity right here. So this is a pointy mountain. I go a little bit lateral, the pointy mountain goes away, it becomes a valley, <laughs> and then we have the tendon already inside. I go a bit more lateral here, and then we see a flat mountain, and that flat mountain, that is the uh, greater tuberosity. So those are my two landmarks. I go medial, there we have the tendon, further medial we have the lesser tuberosity, and uh, so you can go in between these two, then you know you're in the right position. Um, if we look um, now at the image, first we look at the image, we see that inside the, the trabecular groove I have the, the tendon. Uh, scan with my left like this, yep. So I see the bundles inside the, the biceps tendon, but distally they become hypoechoic. In this case, it's because of anisotropy. So what you need to do uh, is make this uh, straight in your image. You have to get uh, the sound beams that come from the top. You have to make them perpendicular with the lines of the tendon. So if you look now in my, on my probe, what you need to do from this position is that you take the distal tip of the probe and you press it in like this. So you don't leave it perpendicular to the skin, you make, you make it perpendicular to the tendon. Therefore, you need to push the distal tip in like this. So let's see on the image what that looks like. So he here's the image that we saw. We see the tendon in the middle. Distally, it seems to become very hypoechoic. It's very hard to distinguish it. So I push it in. Oh, wait a second. Two hands. Push it in, I have to push it in even further with him. And I'm pushing it in quite a bit. Here we see the tendon. Now we have a nice long axis view and um, you can follow it further down it's a very difficult scan though but let me give it a go there we go now we see that the tendon is becoming thinner and we see the muscle belly starting so what we he see here is the muscle belly of the long head of the biceps if he can uh, make a bit of a fist and then we do a little supination and pronation you can see the actual muscle belly of the biceps you see it moving so you can confirm that this is the long head of the biceps and then we go back up again oh there it is and we're inside the groove again so this is the video for the biceps